everyone, and welcome to the Moving AutoCAD to Revit webinar. My name is Carolina Fernandez, and I work in both marketing and sales here at MicroCAD. Today, we have Sandra who will be going over the webinar, but before we start, friendly reminder that in the bottom left corner, you can be asking questions at any given point in time, and we'll be answering all your questions at the end. And again, right now we're running our summer training promotion. If you register two people for training, you get one 30% off. But without further ado, I'll pass it on to Sandra. Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Revit to AutoCAD webinar. To be or not to be, to be more productive, more competitive, or my name is Sandra Wolgemot, and this webinar is one in a series offered by MicroCAD to empower our colleagues, you guys, to be more productive, effective. So let me start by sharing my screen. So As a company, MicroCAD empowers design professionals in the construction and manufacturing industries to increase productivity and meet project goals. With 30 years of experience as a minority-owned business, we pride ourselves on working with clients through every stage of the design process to assess needs and provide tailored and effective solutions. Sandra, I don't see your screen. Do you want to make sure that you're sharing? Yes, sorry. I thought I was sharing my screen. Just give me a second. Right, we see your screen now. Thank you. Thank you. So, as I was saying, um, let me introduce Revit, and let me introduce Revit our, our <clears throat> excuse me, as our uh, first uh, program in the Autodesk BIM solutions, and that is why you see here the word BIM, because this is the first and foremost program, and it's the foundation of the Autodesk BIM workflow for architects, engineers, um, project owners and everybody else that is involved in the building life of a model of a project. Uh, Revit supports a, an integrated, multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary design approach. With Revit, you can make any changes very, very fast because we're working with uh, intelligent parametric objects. You can generate floor plans, elevations, sections, and schedules, and you can regenerate all those, uh, not only automatically, I mean, they're implicit within the project, but they will update automatically whenever a change is done anywhere. And then your models can be extended for analysis, visualization, coordination, and collaboration. 
So many, many uses in just one software. The benefits for using Revit, and I'm going to be um, going from um, the AutoCAD interface to the Revit interface to show you each one of these bullets. Okay, the first and foremost and most important advantage of working with Revit is that in Revit we're dealing with a single database system. In AutoCAD, you have a fragmented file system. What does that mean? In the AutoCAD interface, and I'm jumping a little bit above AutoCAD, uh, vanilla AutoCAD or uh, AutoCAD LT. I'm going to, I mean, in both vanilla AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, you have a feature called the Sheet Set Manager. When you jump up into our, um, into AutoCAD's verticals, like AutoCAD Architecture or AutoCAD NEP, we're going to be talking about the project. And this is the closest feature that we have in AutoCAD, like the highest feature that we have in AutoCAD that resembles anything that Revit carries. And yes, we have a project, but I have a big issue with this. At the end of the game, when I come to the level of where my sheets come out of, every view every sheet view, if I go into the level one, the A1 floor plan view, and I open this view up. Ready for print. Right, it's ready to go out for production. My big issue with it, let's give it a moment. Where am I having an issue with this is that in my sheets, right, the floor plan view that is open right now is comprised out of this view here. And if I go to this view here, it will be comprised out of a whole bunch of XRFs loaded on XRFs loaded on XRFs. What is my issue with that? If somebody forgets at some point to update an XRF, my drawings go out with information that is not up to date or not coordinated between floor plan sections, elevations, details, schedules, and everything else, and 3D, 3D representations. And, and it is still dependent on these extras being updated. What happens in Revit? Very similar situation. And you have a project browser, right? So the, the interface and the way it works is kind of similar to what you already know. You have views that are loaded inside a sheet. The big advantage of this is that this is a viewport looking directly into a model, into a 3D model where I can make changes inside that viewport while it's in the sheet or I can be working on my working views. Same deal, right? And I can make changes here to any of my model elements and I never have to worry if those changes were transferred to my project sheets. Right? 
if that x ref was um, updated. So, next point that I want to make. Let's go back to our PowerPoint for a moment. Edits to the model can be made in any view at any time without having to think about time-consuming coordination tasks. And I think I proved that. Ne next thing I want to show you is um, any change that I make in my project, I want to be able to um, see it in many different views. And I want to be able to interact with my changes right away. What happens in AutoCAD is that these elements called sections here, they're static elements. They're looking at a view. Right? And notice this is an XREF load it into an XREF, load it into an XREF, and for me to get to um, this section, if I wanted to change anything that is being shown by the section or by an elevation, A, I want to, I need to open up a whole bunch of um, XREFs, and secondly, and most importantly, it is just a static view of that uh, model at that moment in time. If anything changed, I would need to recreate that section, and that would take me at least 10, 15 clicks. Every click takes time. It takes money. So let me show you how Revit handles a situation like that. I want to create a section view. And I want to see this door precisely. I do two clicks. I define how far in into the building I want to see. And I go to the view. I set it up to where I want to see, and if I tile my views, this section right now is a live element where I can address this door either through the floor plan view or through the section view. Let me jump back to AutoCAD for a moment and from the uh, project navigator, let me open up our door schedule. And I'm going to open up the door schedule view, not the door schedule sheet. Awesome. If I go to the model, Let's say somebody grabbed Let me hide this layer for a moment in view. Did you see where I'm going? Uh, where I go, every click counts. Perfect, sorry. Uh, let's open this guy in place and let's open that reference. And I mean, 
needless to continue going on. It will take me forever to come to one of these elements here to affect the schedule. Right? Going back to Revan. Let me open up and tell my views where you can see your uh, door schedule for the first floor. And notice one very neat thing that Revit has also coming from uh, the schedules being that it is a bi-directional project and everything is in one database and I am connecting everything with everything. I can select a door here or I can select a door here and ask it to highlight it for me in the model. And that is that same door. This door doesn't have a tag right now. So if I want to tag it with the room with the number 112, notice in the schedule it will jump down. Ah. When it, I click enter. It jumped down here in the schedule. I named it 112 here in the schedule. When I come here to annotate in my floor plan view, and I go to tag by category, this door now will know that it's door 112. Now, in its width and in its height, not so happy with the width and its, its height because it is a curtain wall door that is controlled by the grid lines of the curtain wall. So, if I want to make this door a little bit wider, <clears throat> sorry, I can move this grid line. You notice that the width changed here. I want to even that out, I need to add here a half a foot and the width changed here in the schedule. Okay. Haven't shown you that. Everything that I have done at this point has hap happened in the views, in the floor plan views, correct? Have not had to worry about how it does look in my sheet. So let's go to my sheet view. Wrong sheet. go and notice that this sheet was updated with the tag if I want to check if the door got updated the door got updated in itself just by changing it in the schedule view or in the schedule the schedule that is loaded in the sheet view in the sheet got updated with all the changes that I did there too. So just to wrap it up a little bit, 
Notice that uh, changes can be done on the fly. I can have my project from the get-go set up with all the sheets set up with all the views loaded. I can go and work on my views. My client calls me up, asks me if I can um, send him an update of the work. And I just need to go to my print command and print the whole thing. And I don't even have to go and check if my schedules or if my elevations or if my sections got updated. Okay. If you have worked before with um, AutoCAD architecture, you will be able to leverage the knowledge that you have from that software. We are dealing with intelligent objects. This wall knows that it is a wall. Furthermore, the wall knows that it carries uh, information about uh, its uh, thermal resistance. Very important, and its heat transfer, very important that we start connecting to all those numbers and all that analytical information in our models from earlier earlier on in the design so that we can become a little bit more sustainable. So uh, Revit will allow you to create analytical models, keep an eye open for our Insight webinar where we, where we will show you those capabilities where from the very early design process, you can start making decisions about where your project is going and how it needs to be handled to be more energy efficient. So, Having made my points, let's go a little bit back and let me rephrase myself from the beginning. Clicks take time. Time is money. The more you're able to have uh, an open and clean transfer from one view to another, the more you are able to have one database controlling everything that you do. And this not only reaches into the architectural realm. Let me jump back a little bit back into Revit. This reaches into uh, the MEP realm. It reaches into um, the structural realm and they're very robust. So for a uh, mechanical engineer, there is ways to control your uh, spaces in your airflows and you can have a check of uh, how much airflow is needed in a space, how much airflow has been supplied to the space, and you can start from very early on using the software also as an analytical software very easily. Okay, any change done anywhere happens everywhere. You have embedded duct pressure loss analytical systems for pipe pressure also. You can locate your models to make uh, energy analysis. You can locate your models geographically correctly anywhere in the world. And I have experimented with this, locating models either in the United States or in Europe or in South America to get different weather uh, results. So there is huge advantages of making this jump over. 
So having said all this, let me open the floor up for some questions that you guys might have. Okay, so we have a few questions coming in. Again, you can use the left corner in order to submit your questions. Um, and so our first question is, uh, I usually am very busy. What is the biggest challenge in moving from AutoCAD to Revit? Is it, a, is it hard to make the change? Um, to me, what I have experienced with um, long-time AutoCAD users, the biggest hurdle is making the mental change of learning a new technology. Once you embed yourself into it, we will show you ways that will that you will find tools that are very similar between one interface and the other. So my question would say, it's not hard at all. It's just making, I mean, being in the correct mental uh, mindset that you will have to invest into changing your current workflows just at that, and then you will start finding similarities between one software and the other, and then it will, it's worth it to make the jump. Yeah, it's about kind of having that growth mentality and also you can take advantage of the training promotion we have now in order to really feel like you're getting the full um, transition process taken care of. Um, so we have another question here as well. Um, can our firm standards be maintained? How do I make sure of this? Yes, and that, I mean, let me link last, the last question and this question to something that Carolina just mentioned which is um, we are here. We, MicroCAD, are a huge team of very, very knowledgeable people. You can bank on us to hold your hand from the beginning that you decide to make the jump and decide to start training with us until we are done not only training you, teaching you how to use the interface, of Revit and how to use this new tool and weapon that we're giving in your hands to make you more profitable and more um, efficient. Um, we will accompany you all the way until you control the software and the software stops controlling you. And until you are the owner of this new technology that you're going to adopt, we as MicroCAD are here. So we offer not just training, we offer on the run support services that I highly advise to uh, get from us so that your whole process is being done in a professional way and allow us as professionals to go guide you through this process to make it uh, absolutely painless. All right. So we also have one question here. Um, what are the time frames of complete implementation? Around how long will this take me to adapt? Um, we can do the initial training in uh, two weeks' time. I always advise to take. Uh, the second phase of training where we teach a little bit of templates that is another uh, two weeks time so we're into the first month at that point and through that time we will have discussed with you um, what your standards are and how you want to build the template so in a month after that, I mean, after you start done training, you can start doing your first initial steps in, re in, in Revit. After the first two months, you will have the skeleton of your company's template. In the first six months, we will polish that template and polish your knowledge. And I would say after the first six months, 
you I can take the training wheels off and let you fly on your own. I don't know if that's that. So it looks like we just have one more. Yeah. So it looks like we just have one more question, but as a reminder, they can be technical questions. They can be training questions, anything. Don't be shy to ask in the left hand corner. Um, but it looks as of now, one more question is, uh, I have a Regic Pro Revit project coming up. Don't feel comfortable using it. Uh, is it worth taking it on by training or is it better to uh, outsource the project? Um, take it on. Outsources, outsource it to us. We can use it to train you through that project. We do it. We do it together with you in class. We use it as our class exercise. It's a little bit risky to do it in a hot project that depends on your timelines. But. Uh, my concept has always been you have to make the jump you may have to take the plunge at some point I mean, okay yeah i i completely agree and i also think that that's we do offer those group classes but also custom training is a great way um just because you can always be that way you don't feel as much like you're taking downtime because you bring in your own project that you want to work on and we teach you how to use Revit at the same time in which you're actually um, getting your hands on the project that you're working on. So thank you, Sandra, for a wonderful presentation. Other than that, it does not look like we have any other questions at the time. Um, again, friendly reminder, if you register up to two people for training, you get one of them 30% off and we'll be happy to connect with you any other way. Be sure to be checking out our website as we do have other webinars coming up. If you are interested in Enscape, we do have that webinar next week, Thursday, September 19th. That's for real-time rendering. Great if you're an architect. Great if you want to work with um, helping clients visualize their projects. That's what we'll be talking about next week. And other than that, thank you again, Sandra, for a wonderful presentation. And we look forward to speaking with you at a later time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolina. This was awesome. Just to remind you, we have all these offices throughout the United States. These are our phone numbers. This is our website where you can find us. And my name Perfect. is Sandra Wolgemuth, and I'm your friendly Revit face in microcap. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. Thank you all who joined. Take care. Bye-bye.